ISO 27001 Annex A 8.11 Data Masking. Okay, I'm going to show you how you can implement this particular Annex A control and how you can pass the audit. First of all, we're going to start with the definition so you know what it is that the standard is looking for. And then I'm going to go through the tips and techniques about how you can go about meeting this. So, the definition. Data masking should be used in accordance with the organization's topic-specific policy on access control and other related topic-specific policies and business requirements taking applicable legislation into consideration. Nice easy, right? Nice and easy. Data masking. There's different levels that you can go to when you want to implement this, right? You can go to the entry degree or you can go to the basic degree. The basic degree is you're going to have an access control policy, right? One of the simplest things that you can do is have an access control policy and then set out within there what your approach to data masking is. My top tip, my advice is that I put a line in my access control policy that says we mask data in line with our GDPR or data protection regulation requirements, wherever you are, right? It's a big handoff. The standard in the 2022 update land grabbed a number of different areas that it didn't need to go after. The data masking requirements is already covered and already part of data regulation, data protection, um, and those data laws. So we are going to rely on that to set the standard for us, unless you have a very specific requirement about implementing data masking into your organization. Nine times out of 10, small organizations don't, and they come to me and go, how do I tick the box or how do I meet the requirement? The requirement you meet by saying we rely on our GDPR or our data protection or our data regulation requirements, and we fully meet those. What that means is that you are clearly going to hand off to and include the services of a GDPR, data protection, data regulation professional. You're going to rely on them. You're going to need them, right? You're going to need their help and you're going to need their support to understand what it is that you need to do. But data masking isn't particularly hard. To implement it, if I go through the guide, you're going to implement your topic specific policy for access control. You're going to define what the requirements are for data masking based on your information classification level. You're going to implement controls based on the data masking requirements, keep records, and then test those controls and make sure that they're working appropriately. When it comes to data masking, people say, well, what techniques can I use? What are the approaches? The high level three techniques that, that, that we look at when we look at data masking, let's go through them because you probably hear these words and the words will come up uh, as part of your audit or as part of your operating life. So the first one is anonymization. This technique fundamentally and irreversibly alters data in a way that it can no longer be directly or indirectly identified. That's one technique. The next one, pseudo anonymization. This technique uses an alias in place of data. It, play, it replaces data with an alias. If you know the algorithm used to create the alias, it is possible to recreate the data, but when this technique is used, every effort is taken to protect that algorithm. So there is a slight downside to using that, and there are some additional controls you need, but that's pseudo anonymization. And then data masking. This technique seeks to conceal, hide, or substitute data. So we can consider things like encryption, substitution, hashing, varying numbers and dates, deleting characters, etc. So there are things that you can do when it comes to that data masking itself. If we're going to comply, the first thing that I would say is get the help of a professional that understands data protection regulation. This is really what it's aiming at. This is really the heart of where it's going. So understand and record the legal, regulatory and contractual requirements you have for data. Conduct that risk assessment. Based on your legal, regulatory and contractual requirements and the risk assessment, you'll implement a classification scheme. You're going to implement and communicate your topic-specific policy on access control. You're going to document and implement your processes and technical implementations for data masking. And then you're going to check that those are working by doing your internal audits. What is an auditor going to check? So when they come to you, they're going to check that you understand what your data protection requirements are definitely and that you've implemented them. As I say, it has done a land grab, so it is going to reach out and look at things like your data protection, your GDPR, and specifically here, it's going to look at making sure the data masking is uh, implemented in line with that. They're going to make sure that you've got documentation in place, that you've documented what your processes are, what your techniques are, how you've gone about it and where you apply it. They're going to make sure that you've uh, implemented it appropriately, right? So they're going to check that. They're going to look at systems uh, and evidence. They're going to want to see these systems in operation, and they want to show you want you to show them uh, that how you've implemented it and it in real life. 
and they're going to want to make sure that you've done internal audit, right? I mean, that just goes goes without saying. But for data masking, they want to make sure that you've checked it, how you've checked it, when you've checked it, uh, and the level of check that you did. If I was going to look at mistakes that people make here for data masking, firstly, you just over worry about it, right? I mean, you just get too concerned about it. It isn't that hard. If we are meeting the minimum requirement of our data protection GDPR uh, data regulation, then we're going to be absolutely golden. Um, if you want to go beyond and beyond that, you can. But what are the mistakes? So mistakes are you've used unmasked data where you shouldn't have done. So if you think about this, you know, sensitive data in development and test environments, not a good idea. These are the areas that, that we see it the most, you know, people taking production data, sensitive data, then running it into that dev and test environment. We covered that as part of software development. Um, so if you followed that, then you're going to be golden when it comes to this. But just make sure that, you know, that you're not using that sensitive data in those environments. Consider things like, you know, using sensitive data for file names or in emails uh, in both the subject uh, and in the title. Right. You know, so you've got the body text, you've got the subject. Are you including that sensitive information within there? You probably shouldn't be. Well, you definitely shouldn't be. So let's not be doing that. Another mistake that people make is you don't know what your legal obligations are, right? Cost cutting, cost saving, smaller organizations, they don't want to engage with a professional, right? They don't want to engage either with a legal representative, they don't want to engage with a data protection professional. And as a result of that, they can get into hot water pretty quickly with that regulation and therefore with this control. So make sure that where you need to, that you're engaging with those professionals and you're meeting your legal and regulatory requirements. So data, mas data masking isn't particularly hard. As I say, you know, I would just place that reliance. If you are working on something that is particularly sensitive and your deployment requires it, then let's make sure that we're implementing it. You know, if you have off the shelf packages and tools that allow it to be implemented easily and simply, then let's do that where it's appropriate to you and where it makes sense. My name is Stuart Barker. I am the ISO 27001 Ninja, the ISO 27001 Online Guru, and that is data masking. So until the next tutorial, peace out.